Um, thank you. Welcome, everyone. It is 6.33 p.m. Um, we have a special meeting this evening, and I just would like to start with a roll call for attendance of the Board of Education. Please just um, identify yourself as present. Ms. Krista Berardi? Here. Ms. Carrie Cunningham? Here. Mr. Eric Rutzner? Here. Mr. Danny Hines? Present. Mr. Glenn Niles? Here. Mr. Scott Seaman? Here. And myself, Sonia Masika. So we have seven members present. Okay, thank you. Um, so I guess we begin with um, administrative remarks this evening. Dr. Gosh, did you have something you wanted to share? Yes, thank you. Good evening. I have two announcements. Um, the first has to do with a recent announcement on the Regents exams. Um, so it seems like each week the State Education Department issues guidance that in any other situation would be a showstopper. Um, several weeks ago, they announced that the three through eight math and ELA assessments were canceled, as well as grades four and eight science, the New York State alternative, alternative assessment, and the NYSESOT examinations. Today, it became official that the Regents examinations would also be canceled this year. So as you know, passing five of these examinations is necessary for graduation. The guidance uh, issued today stated that a student would be exempt and that um, exam would count towards graduation if the student is currently enrolled in a course of study that ends in a Regents exam and will have earned credit in the course uh, by the end of this, this school year, or if the student previously had been enrolled in a Regents course, had passed the course, but had, uh, had failed the exam um, and were planning on taking it in June. Um, so it, it is our practice currently to not count a Regents score in a student's grade point average anyway. Um, but the score on the Regents exam does appear on a student's high school's transcript. Um, the State Education Department mentioned um, that they will be sharing additional guidance as to how to exempt, how an exempt Regents score uh, should appear in the transcript. So this, it, this news is significant and has widespread implications for hundreds of students. So I'll be sure uh, to work, to continue working with Mrs. Horler, Mr. Clark and their teams to operationalize this guidance. And my second announcement has to do with grading. Um, as digital distance learning <laughs> extends for a longer period of time, the question of how students will um, not just be assessed, but also what type of grades they will receive sort of looms over us um, as a question that needs to be answered. So today, a group of K-12 teachers and administrators met to continue this conversation. We discussed what should be our driving philosophy. Um, what is, we looked at what was being done throughout the region, and we were able to share some of our thoughts uh, at this point in time. So we know that this is a delicate balance that we need to strike, uh, accounting for a multitude of factors. Um, the group agreed that after our session today, indiv individual bu buildings would meet again, um, and then we would reconvene at the end of the week to, uh, to see where we are. Um, so we just wanted to share that this is very much a, a, a conversation that is in process and ongoing. We want to make sure we're deliberate and we have a well thought out process. Um, and although we need to make a decision soon, we don't want to rush, but we will share um, with the board our, our progress by the end of the week. And that concludes my comments. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Dr. Banlow? Yes, I have, I have just three updates for the board. I'll make them brief. First, um, I will continue to remind the board and give the board updates when we get information from the governor's office and state education department as Dr. Vice just shared our two new updates that we just received this week. Also, every day, every week brings a new challenge to all of our staff, teachers, administrators to solve and, you know, just as Dr. Gosh had mentioned, grading, grading in the digital age, every time we, every day brings a new challenge. And I have to tell you, everybody is coming together throughout the district to solve the many, many new challenges that, that we never thought we had to face. So I just wanted to share that. And I wanna thank everyone in the, entire, in the entire school community and just share that with the Board of Education, how terrific everyone has been working together. And then my last update is that we decided we're gonna be doing a weekly video update called Bear Hugs. Um, it will be in part information for the community, a couple of shout outs if there's some folks doing some great things out there. Um, also a fun challenging theme for the kids. Um, this week they're gonna be sending us pictures of their pets and their pets names. Um, next week we're gonna be looking at ways the kids are staying active and safe. And uh, also we're gonna bring on some celebrity guests like maybe Dr. Gosh, Dr. Harrington, things like that, just to kind of bring everybody together. So those are the only updates I have right now, and thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Um, and for myself, just want to also repeat the thank you as we continue to go through this, um, you know, very unique, <laughs> these very unique circumstances. Um, I just, I have to say, I think everyone in the district is just doing such a phenomenal job, um, you know, navigating it all and managing it all and updating the board and the community. Um, so just thank you to everyone also. Um, okay, so now we move on to our one action item for the evening. <clears throat> and it is uh, for the approval of a revised budget calendar for 2020-2021, is that correct? Yeah, for, for the next year's school budget. For next school, okay. Um, so go ahead, Victor, did you want to? Sure, so the governor recently put out an executive order which pushed back the budget vote to a date after June 1st. Um, he didn't specify the date when the budget revote should take place. However, the statewide budget revote day is always the uh, third Tuesday in June, I believe, uh, which this year would fall on June 16th. So naturally, we want to have our budget vote uh, as early as we possibly can, given the governor's executive order. So we're recommending a budget vote of June 2nd. Um, most other school districts are following a June 2nd budget vote date. The New York State Association of School Business Officials, our statewide organization, is recommending June 2nd as the budget vote date. But again, given all of the uncertainty that we're dealing with and the um, you know, constantly evolving um, you know, situation, uh, it's possible that this date could also change. So I want to make sure that we put out that caveat and we, we put that out in our letter, in our backpack letter yesterday, that all of this is still subject to change pending subsequent executive orders that come from the governor. So with that said, what we are uh, recommending for the budget development calendar, again, is a budget vote on Tuesday, June 2nd, um, which would uh, set back a couple of statutory deadlines for us, most notably the first legal notice, which would need to be published no later than uh, April 17th. So that's why we had to have a special meeting tonight to approve this agenda item because it requires us to put out a legal notice on April 17th when our next regularly scheduled board meeting isn't until Tuesday, June, uh, Tuesday April 21st. Um, so just looking at the, uh, the budget calendar, the dates, the, the main changes really, um, budget adoption will now be on uh, May 5th, whereas before it was on April 21st, we were able to push that back for two weeks. Uh, budget uh, option on April, I'm um, sorry, on May 5th, which is the latest date that we can do it under the new guidance. Um, budget hearing on May 26th, and previously that had been scheduled for May 12th. Uh, so those are the, the main changes. And again, of course, the, the budget vote being on June 2nd, um, as we know it today. Again, this is all, you know, tentative, fluid, and subject to change with any subsequent executive orders that come out. And you know, with that, we'll you know constantly evolve as does um, you know the direction from uh, the state. Okay, thank you. Uh, I need a motion first and a second, and then the board can ask any questions. Uh, so, may I have a motion for this action item, please? This is Krista Berardi. I'll make the motion. Thank you, and a second. Harry Cunningham. Thank you. Okay, questions or comments from the board. Um, okay, I'm not hearing any. So um, thank you, Victor, for your explanation of things. And I'm, you know, obviously we'll just keep everyone updated as things change. Um, and hopefully we get something definitive before that April 17th deadline, because that's real quick coming up. Um, okay, so then we just move on to a roll call vote for this action item. Uh, Ms. Krista Berardi, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Carrie Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Eric Gretzner? Yes. Mr. Danny Hines? Yes. Mr. Glenn Niles? <coughs> yes. Mr. Scott Seaman? Yes. Uh, and myself, Sonia Masika, yes. Uh, there are no, zero no's. <laughs> so motion passes, seven, zero. Okay, thank you. Um, and now we just adjourn the meeting. It was a quick one. The only purpose of today's meeting was for this very specific action item. Um, our next 
board meeting will be April 21st, if I have that correct. Um, that'll be a full board meeting. And so I just need a motion now to close the meeting. Uh, Eric Grutz and I make the motion. Thank you. And a second, please. Uh, Danny Hines. Thank you. And again, I need a roll call vote to close the meeting. Uh, Ms. Krista Berardi. Yes. Ms. Carrie Cunningham. Yes. Mr. Eric Grutzner. Yes. Mr. Danny Hines. Yes. Mr. Glenn Niles. Yes. Mr. Scott Seaman. Yes. And myself, Sonia Masika, yes. Motion to close, adjourn the meeting, um, passes 7-0. Thank you, everyone, and uh, have a good night. Okay. Have a great night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.